In our last video, we saw some properties of the gradient vector. We're going to see one more important one in this video. That has to do with level curves. So let's say we have a function z equals f of x, y. And then I have a parameterization for some level curve of f. Well, let's make a few important observations. The first observation is that because this is a level curve, if I substitute x of t comma y of t into the function, I get out a constant for every value of t because that's what level curves are. Their x comma y is where when I plug them into the function, I get out a constant. My second observation is that I can draw a very simple chain rule for this. I can have this dependency diagram that we're very used to, I think, at this point. And I can label these two with partials and these two with derivatives, but regardless, we end up with this derivative statement. More importantly than that, because of the first observation, the derivative of f with respect to t has to be zero. Combining the first two observations, I end with the observation that my chain rule here, the product of these partials added together, is zero. Now I can imagine that that is partial of f with respect to x, comma the partial of f with respect to y, the gradient vector dot dx dt dy dt. So finally, we have the statement I was looking for, that I have a dot product of the gradient vector with the velocity vector equal to zero. Well, this means these two vectors are orthogonal. So let's see what that means. So I had a level curve in the domain given by R of t. I can imagine that t, as t increases, I had some orientation on the curve, meaning the velocity vector should point in the direction of motion tangent to the curve. Del f is an orthogonal vector. Here I've drawn del f and v close in size to each other, and I really don't know anything about their lengths for uh, in the general case, but I do know they're orthogonal to each other, and if I draw them both from this point, that's going to mean they're perpendicular to each other. So the conclusion we can draw from these observations, at every point, x not y not, on a level curve, del f evaluated at that point is normal, perpendicular to the level curve. Okay, so the gradient vector is always perpendicular to a level curve, and we can put that together with some things we thought of yesterday or in the previous video. So here, I have a map that contains some level curves. And it happens to be a map of Pilot Mountain here in North Carolina. It's one of my favorite places to go in North Carolina, an actual mountain that rises fairly well above level ground. So in this topographical, topographical map, 
we see level curves indicating altitude. So here I have a level curve indicating 1,600 feet, and here's one at 1,400 and 1,200 feet, and I see the peak labeled here nicely, and clearly I just printed a map out of Google Maps. Please forgive me. But I want to imagine drawing a gradient vector at this point. All right, so I want to sketch del f at the point indicated. Okay, well, I know del f has to be perpendicular, normal to that level curve. So what I'm gonna do to help myself out is just sketch in a tangent line, or about, you know, approximately the tangent line at that point. Because when I say normal to the level curve, I'm really thinking perpendicular to this tangent line. All right, and that really gives me two options for del f. Del f could go this way, or this way. And I really don't know how long to make it, so I guess I'm really just after its direction here in this activity, but I'll, I'll sketch a vector with some amount of length just as an example. Pause the video here and see if you can figure out which orthogonal direction del f should point. Okay, so the idea is in this video, we know that the gradient vector is perpendicular to this tangent line, to the level curve itself. In our previous video, we found out that del f points in the direction of largest increase. And so, I'm perpendicular to this, but I should be pointing generally towards the peak of the mountain. I should be going up, the direction of most rapid increase. So my gradient vector should be pointing this direction. And again, I don't know how long to make it, but del f might be something like that at that particular point. Now again, going back to that video right before this one, opposite of del f points in the opposite direction and is the direction of most rapid decrease from that point. And so I'll try to make it about the same length. Should be easy because I'm using a ruler, but I chose to make it difficult. And there's the direction of most rapid decrease. The only other property we knew about these gradient vectors is that if I go perpendicular, right, if this was my direction of motion, that's the direction of no change. Well, I'm moving tangent to a level curve, that's the direction of motion. Literally, that's saying if I stay on that level curve, it's the direction of no change. All right, so the big idea here, del f is perpendicular to level curves. Del f itself points in the most rapid uh, direction of increase. The opposite of del f points in the direction with the most rapid decrease. And orthogonal to that, we have that tangent line where, to a level curve where there is a direction of zero change.